welcome back to my channel my name is Carolyn and today's video is going to be my August reading wrap up part one so the first book I read is Do Not Disturb by A.R. Tor. this is the second book in the Deanna Madden erotic thriller series and I liked it but I didn't love it this time it's about a rapist and he's just been released from prison he's actually sort of a prisoner in his own home he's got one of those tags on and he can't leave his house for three months so he's trying to get his fixes um, other ways and he goes on to the internet and finds Deanna he becomes slightly obsessed with her because she won't do as she's told and he really wants to make her do as she's told he wants to take control and he goes out to find her obviously he does and things don't quite go to plan what irritated me most about this was her feelings about wanting to kill people and the fact that although things do come to a head in this book for the majority of it she just talks about it and if you've seen the show Dexter, you will know that he doesn't just constantly talk about how he wants to kill, he actually kills. And so you've always got proof. There's times in this novel as well where she has the chance to do it, but then doesn't. And so she becomes an unbelievable heroine. The tone of the book is not dark enough. It's not sinister. The delivery is too light and fluffy. I don't think the book delves enough into her psyche to show the depravity and the darkness of her thoughts. And for me, this is what makes her interjections of being a psychopath almost childish and sort of devoid of any truth. But there is something that happens that does nearly redeem her in my eyes at, of being a psychopath. So I'm hoping if I do get round to reading book three, which at the moment I'm not sure, but if I do, I'm hoping that the author um, goes a bit deeper and the tone become a bit more sinister because this is just a bit too light and fluffy and so that's why I didn't enjoy this as much as the first book but yeah I can't say that I loved it I gave it three stars and I may go on to read book three but it depends how I feel when it's released the next book I read was The Stepford Wives by Ira Levin this was the first book I've read by this author, but I watched the movie um, a long, long, long time ago, and I really enjoyed that movie. It did give me the creeps. It was really weird. So I picked up this book in the hope that I would get something a little bit more than I did from the movie, and I can't say that I did, to be honest. It's about this family that moves to Stepford, and she's a photographer and very much, um, a feminist and wants to do her own thing even if she is a wife and mother she wants to have a job and her husband seems to be like-minded they seem to get on really well the kids and everything is quite well adjusted but he moves to Stepford because of his job and she finds that a lot of the women are um, very much into housework and very much into motherhood and looking after their husbands and laundry and cleaning etc and she finds this very odd but she does come across another woman Bobby who uh, is more uh, like-minded and they look into what is going on in Stepford in the meantime her husband joins a men's only club over time things start to change and she becomes very nervous and thinks that something sinister going on which of course there is it was very very interesting I'm glad I read it but because it was so short you don't really get attached to the characters or anything I don't think you really become invested it's just a very quick read and it is thought-provoking uh, but yeah I can't say I loved it and I gave it three stars the next book I read was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte I read this for the first time when I was 14 so a long time ago now and when I read it for the first time I gave it five stars I absolutely loved it I love the characters the writing on rereading it I was so pleased that I really love this book just as much as I did the first time round. I buddy read this with Helene from Helene Jefferson or The Book Owl as you may know her 
and um, we read this together and I'm pleased to say that she enjoyed it too. I won't go into too much depth on this book because there are quite a few surprises that I think would be nice for readers to find out for themselves. It's about a guy called um, Gilbert Markham who meets a woman called Helen Graham who has taken up residence with her son in the local Wildfell Hall which is slightly dilapidated and they are all very intrigued about this mysterious woman that keeps to herself, is quite aloof and distant and cold and they all make up stories about her and um, why she's there on her own. I gave this book four and a half stars this time round and it really pained me to knock off that half a star and I know it's not a lot um, but I really love this book when I read it the first time and so when I read it with my mature adult eyes with lots of reading behind me and experiences I noticed a couple of things about this book that made me feel as though it wasn't the perfect read that I felt it was the first time round. That's not to say that what I feel about the story has changed because that hasn't. I think this is a wonderful story and has a really lovely romance in there and there's lots and lots to keep you interested. It's uh, not just a romance. The whole book is mainly a letter, a letter from Gilbert Markham to a friend that he's telling his story about his life and about meeting Helen Graham. There are three volumes to this book. Volume one and volume three is from the perspective of Gilbert Markham or thereabouts. And volume two is from the perspective of Helen. Helen's perspective is in the form of journals that she gives to Gilbert to read. And this was where the half a star was sort of knocked off because I felt that it was already a letter, so it was a journal within a letter, and so I felt slightly removed because I was seeing it as Gilbert Markham would have seen it as he's reading it, if that makes sense rather than me listening to Helen tell her story. I also felt that the middle part um, went on slightly too long, but that wasn't um, too bad, and I still really love this book. If you haven't read it, I would definitely recommend that you do, because it is beautiful. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. The next book I read was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I have never read Harry Potter series. I didn't like the first two Harry Potter movies because I don't like Radcliffe as a child actor. He really, really put me off those movies and I was really sad because they looked so magical and I love fantasy and I love all that kind of thing. And so those movies actually put me off reading the books as well. But now I feel that many, many years has passed since I watched those movies. So I thought I would give the series a go. And I really enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. It was a quick read. I thought it was really fun and it gave me that feeling that I thought if I was like 10, I would have gobbled this up and I would have absolutely loved it because it really did feel like a magical adventure and I really liked the narrative of Harry Potter and I liked all the characters and because Harry Potter came from such a horrible family with his aunt and uncle and Dudley who was horrible um, it made you really want to root for Harry and I didn't see Radcliffe as Harry Potter anymore I have my own little Harry Potter in my mind and so I really was able to enjoy the story I will however say that there was one complaint from me and that was um, the sort of aspect of the magical world and then the muggle world and I felt that there were some inconsistencies where you'd have children at Hogwarts like Ron who would be really intrigued and interested about seeing a 50 pence piece and yet he lives amongst muggles in the muggle world and some of them didn't know what football was and I thought but if you live amongst the muggles or amongst muggles or whatever I'm just learning the lingo that aspect of, of it was slightly inconsistent and the reason I was a bit sort of confused about this sort of magical world and muggle world was because the the magical people or however you the wizards and all had to go 
from our world, the Muggle world, um, to get to the magical world where Hogwarts existed. Um, and I, I didn't really get it because I thought if you were wizards and magical, wouldn't you be living in the world where Hogwarts is rather than in the Muggle world? And I know that some wizards are made even though they come from a family of muggles, but some of them didn't, and yet they still live amongst muggles. See, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And it's the reason I gave it four and a half stars rather than five stars, because I felt that those two worlds weren't quite explained as well as they could be. But maybe as I go on with the series, which I will be continuing, I'm looking forward to reading book two, um, I'm hoping that the distinction between the muggle world and the magical world will become clearer but yes i really did enjoy it and the last physical book i read so far this month is second chance summer by jill shalvis this is the first book in her new contemporary romance series cedar ridge and sadly i can't say i loved it i didn't hate it i thought it was a cute romance but I didn't love it and I've read the first two books in her Lucky Harbour series which I really enjoyed. The first book I gave four stars, the second book I gave four and a half stars. So I really enjoyed um, those two books. But this one, I couldn't really get into it. It's about a woman called Lily who 10 years previously left her hometown for various reasons and she left quite suddenly. But she's had to come back because she has been sacked from her current job for leaking information to the press about a celebrity who comes to her salon. Although her boss asked her to leak these things, she doesn't actually admit her responsibility about what she did. So she sort of went along thinking, but I didn't do anything wrong. Everybody in the salon business did this. And um, my boss told me to do it. So therefore it's, it's not my fault. And really what she should have done was, you know what? I made a choice. I chose to go along with it. I chose to leak information to the press and therefore I do take some part of the responsibility in that. But she never does that. So right off the bat, I sort of didn't really like Lily as a heroine. Aiden, on the other hand, the hunky firefighting yumminess, um, he was really nice. I liked I liked him a lot. He was a really good male lead, um, very respectful of women. And I like the fact that he comes from a large family and obviously we're gonna get to know all of those over the course of the series. There were some issues um, in the first chapter which didn't start the book off in a good way for me, which is a shame. The first one is where Aiden is rescuing a woman who has walked out on her ledge. In one sentence they had um, they had no options, they had to come from above, they couldn't go out on the ledge with her because it was really bad and crumbly and they couldn't risk it. And in the next sentence they were saying the only thing to do is to go out on the ledge. And the next one was when he came down to rescue this woman who was on the ledge, she jumped at him and wrapped herself around him and he said that he was suffocating in her boobies, which is fine, but then in the next sentence it was said when she jumped on his back and I just thought well you can't be suffocated by boobies if they're at your back so it was just those two things just irritated me right from the get-go because I hate those inconsistencies I just think it's these little things that oh just really bug me so yeah I didn't enjoy that in the very first chapter so I was already irritated as I was moving on in the book but then the romance started to happen and it is a cute romance even if I didn't quite get on board with the heroine. It did drag a little bit during the middle portion or, or the last third maybe of the book and so yeah I only gave this three stars out of five. The next three books I listened to as audiobooks 